We turn now to the often tense relationship between police and minority communities. The death of Eric Gardner in 2014, together with a series of deadly encounters between people of color and the police, ignited a nationwide conversation about this complex issue. The conversation is especially relevant in the city of Newark, which almost exactly one year ago reached a settlement with the Department of Justice to correct what the federal government described as illegal and discriminatory practices by the city's police department. To explore the issue of police community relationships, Metro Focus contributor Steve Adubato and NJTV host Michael Hill recently sat down with 12 leaders from various sectors of the Newark community, including Mayor Ross Baraka, Public Safety Director Anthony Ambrose, and Black Lives Matter organizer Zeli Imani. Building trust, race, police, and the community covers a broad range of issues from implicit bias to police training to social justice and more. And the One Hour Forum airs this week on PBS. Here's a look. At some point, I'm wondering, can we agree on anything? Can we agree that what we saw on video in Staten Island on any level made no sense, was egregious, and took the life of Eric Gardner for no good reason? Yes. Yeah. We could agree. We could agree as, 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 as we could agree as all in this room that it was extensive. For the, for, for, for the, it was for the crime that was committed, it was extensive. But that police officer was doing just what he was trained to do. Okay? You know, I understand also as, a, as my son is a police officer, I hear what you're saying, but it's troubling. I don't condone right. it. It's, don't, don't I get it. I don't condone but it's it. Trouble. Trouble. You're explain, you're it's trying to explain. You don't condemn it, though. We, we, and, and, and if we explain it away, from, from a human perspective, when we, we, when we explain things away like that, I think we give credence to something that's very dangerous. It's a rationale. And again, there's more than two sides to a story. And we have to, there, there's three, there's five. Um, but I know what I saw, and I know what I felt. And I'm coming from a situation where you try to be rational, and, and what happened there was, was not justified. And joining now to talk about this important conversation is former moderator and Metro Focus contributor, Steve Arabato. Steve, welcome. Great to be here. Now, Steve, what moved you to do this special? So many things. By the way, that was my younger sister, Michelle Arabato, was held at the, the North Ward Center, a community-based organization. North that your father started. That she's the CEO of now. And, <laughs> We brought together these 12 uh, leaders. Uh, four of them were police leaders. They were community leaders, the head of Black Lives Matter in the area. So many people. But I got to tell you, Ref, all the years you and I worked together, we had leaders from the law enforcement community, leaders from the Department of Justice. We had leaders from the civil rights community. But to bring them all together, 12 of these folks, and have an honest, real conversation. And civil conversation. And civil conversation. <laughs> But here's the thing. We've seen so many, I'm not going to say food fights because it would dignify what really has gone on when I've seen cops and civil rights leaders and others get together, talk about this, because all they do is scream and yell at each other, talk past at each other. And I think many, and, and this is no disrespect to the colleagues in the media, some of the media want to see that for ratings because it causes controversy. We didn't want that. We wanted honest, real dialogue, but civil and where people listen to each other. I knew it would be hard. But if we didn't try to do this, building trust, without any trust, where do we go? This is the issue of our time, yeah. because it will, unfortunately, mm -hmm. it will happen again. And people have some diff different views of what we see. There were cops there who looked at the Eric Garner situation and said, I don't see what you see because I see uh, it from a cop's point right. of view. Yeah. What about the human point of view? Yeah. And we wanted to listen to the cops, we wanted to listen to others and go back and forth and try to find some solutions. So, you know, one of the questions that came up right away was whether the source or the reason for the difficulties that often happen between the police and communities of color, whether the source is simply bad cops, bad, you know, racist cops, or is it a, a systematic dysfunction that runs across police departments in the country? What was the answer? Look, are there racist cops out there? Absolutely. Are there systems that are corrupt? Absolutely. But Mayor Roz Baraka, who was the lead player in this, a lead participant, had this to say about the issue that Raf just raised. The problem is, right, that there is, we have not put anything in place that, are, that will stop those guys, identify it when it comes and say, this doesn't belong here, and begin to, to systemically root it out. People get shot, they don't go to jail, there's no trial, there's other things, things from the rug, there's all kind of, I mean, there's AG guidelines that tell police officers they don't have to go to court, they don't have to make statements, they don't have to do this, there's all kinds of things that, that are involved 
that just need to be disrupted, right, to make the system healthy, right? And I, I don't agree that we, at this point, need to throw the system away, but we absolutely, positively need some antibodies. Hmm. There's a trust issue. Yeah, yeah, but what are some of the antibodies that you guys came up with in this conversation? What were some of the solutions, yeah. some of the answers to the problem? Listen, and by the way, there wasn't unanimity of agreement on the solutions. One, a community civilian review board, and in Newark, they are trying that. They're having the Civilian Review Board, and what that means is that when the co there's an incident involving cops and someone in the minority community, something happens on the street, an incident, that the civilians will look at it together with cops, and they'll examine the situation instead of cops doing it on their own, cops policing cops. The question becomes, the FOP, the union that, yeah. in fact, um, handles the cops, who protects the cops, they're fighting it in court. They're fighting... They're fighting the, 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 yeah, the Civilian yeah. Review Board. So and some say it's a solution. The cops are saying we don't want it. Mm -hmm. it I, do, I actually do believe, Raph, in all candor, that having civilians be a part of this together with cops looking at incidents does matter because you will never build trust, in my opinion, until civilians are a part of this. Mm -hmm. That's one. More women. We also talked about more women in the police force because it was argued that women would be potentially more empathetic mm -hmm. and see things differently. 27% of the cops in Newark are, in fact, women. And finally, who you hire into the police department, mm -hmm. and that the question is, could you potentially identify some of these folks who have these feelings and emotions, and potentially, whether it's a racist view or a hair trigger reaction to things, and may not have, as Daniel Col Goleman said, the emotional intelligence to be a cop. You can't be sure, but hiring better. Listen, those don't solve the problem, but we need to do better. What was the toughest mm -hmm. issue that you discussed in this conversation? The toughest issue for us, and I don't know if we have time for the clip. Yeah, we do. I tell you what, I didn't think it was going to be a complete issue. And again, you and I on Capitol Report, a show that you and I did for over two decades, brought this up. We had cops come on. Mm -hmm. And we had cops come on. It was before the Dallas incident mm -hmm. when we did this. But this was after when we did this show. I felt that it would not be a complete discussion if we did not bring up the issue of cops feeling targeted. Mm -hmm. Those cops were murdered. Mm -hmm. And I said, what about cops feeling targeted? What about cops who have to protect protesters some of whom they believe are looking to kill them, maim them, hurt them. This issue was brought up by a young woman uh, by the name of Fatima Mohammed, who deals with trauma advocacy. She was very insightful. Here's what she said about extraordinary cops who have to have a certain level of understanding about those who are protesting against them. The officers that are the best at this, right, are the ones who don't take it personally, recognize that this is coming from right. all that person's right. past experience, right. and say, you know what, I understand where that anger is coming from. And you know what, I'm going to be an ally to you in this moment, right? Now, that's hard to ask an officer to do, but when they get it, when they get that, they actually can be better on the job if they take on that perspective. Oh, pretty heavy. It's heavy, it's asking a lot, yeah. but the reality is, if a cop can't protect those who are challenging the relationship between police and cops and racist cops and a system that may protect those racist cops, then truthfully, I've come to the conclusion you can't be a cop. Yeah. It's an important conversation, Steve. Thank you so much. Oh, as always, Ralph. Thank you, buddy. Building Trust, Race, Police, and the Community airs this Saturday, March 25th at 1 p.m. right here on 13. Check your local listings.